What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cornar? Oh, hi there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today I'm very excited to check out Skulldug from Ruddy Games. It's for 1 to 6 players. Age is 13 plus, it'll take about 45 to 90 minutes to play. And in Skulldug, you are going to be going into a cave and exploring, trying to find three lost treasures but along the way there are going to be traps there's going to be monsters and of course your fellow explorers are going to try to slow you down or potentially even kill you can you escape the cave with the treasures alive it's a very ambitious game does it all work let's open it up and i'll tell you all right then we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of the skull bug first and foremost we got our handy dandy rule booklet it is 15 pages double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations and examples and it's pretty well done i will say there's one big pet peeve i have with this and you should pay attention to this is that these little bubbles over here actually can contain very important rules, which they normally do not. Normally they're just like helpful hints. But no, you need to read these. But overall, decently made rule booklet. So in Skullbug, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking control of an explorer and you're going to be venturing into a cave like such. And everyone's going to start in the middle here. And then you're going to try and find three of these treasure cards right here, which are the purple cards. When you pick these up, they will give you a disadvantage. Uh, so if you lose health from an injury, lose an additional one health if you're carrying this. So it makes it very difficult to get out of the cave alive with three of those, but if you can successfully do that, you'll be the winner of the game. Along the way, you're gonna be taking three actions per turn, which uh, we'll go over the actions, but let's go over the components, then we'll get a little bit of the gameplay and how everything works, and hopefully we'll get a feel for the game. So first, you're gonna get lots and lots of little uh, standees with different characters on them. The main thing is they just have different colors. Uh, they're not really asymmetrical or anything like that, even though if you do uh, the recommended thing, you will start with various certain items that do fit somewhat thematically. It's like that they put an attempt forth to do the thematics. Next, you're going to have these tiles right here, because like your typical tile laying game, as you move to the next spot, you are going to be putting down a different tile. So let's take a look at some of the tiles so you can figure out how they work. Uh, if you went into this tile, you were going to spawn three red cards, which are bad, denoted by the claw there. If you went to this one right here, you would spawn one red and one blue. Blue are generally going to be treasures like this, which uh, if, you, if you go there, you'll be able to pick them up. When you go into a spot, you don't automatically get whatever the treasure is. You just uh, have the option to pick it up for an action. We'll talk more about the actions in a second. So let's go back to the red card pile so you can see how that works. There are two types of cards you're going to encounter in that pile. The first one are going to be traps. And so this one is a convincing sign. You have to roll higher than the number right here. And yes, you will have a D6 dice to do that. Uh, this one actually doesn't do any injury, but on injury, AKA uh, if you don't roll higher than a five, you're gonna rotate your passage 90 degrees clockwise. So your cave will actually uh, be modified as you progress through the game. And you will find out that this happens quite frequently. Uh, uh, if you're able to successfully complete it, then you'll be able to have the option to pick it up, which is great. Next, you're going to have this guy right here. Uh, this is a mischievous monkey, and there's lots of other different bad guys in here. you got spiders and jesters and basilics and bats, all sorts of different stuff. But you got to roll higher than a four, four or higher, and if you don't, he will do one injury. And on injury, you're going to drop a random card from your hand into your passage. Also, if you can't successfully defeat a, uh, a monster, they're going to push you back to the last space that you were in, which uh, sometimes can be good, sometimes can be bad. It really depends on the situation. Now, in the blue deck, let's go over the three kind of cards you're going to get in the blue deck. First one I already mentioned, those are treasures. Those are how you're going to win the game. They give you a negative effect, but you're going to have to have three of them when you escape the cave, uh, if you escape the cave. Next, you're going to have the blue ones. These are one-time use ones, and uh, you'll use them, and they'll this be discarded. So destroy an unoccupied passage in your line of sight, because as I mentioned, the cave is going to be changing at all times. Uh, you can blast things, you can twist things, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. Last but not least, you're going to have the persistent ones, the armors, that sort of thing. This is a delicate toolkit where rolls against traps gain a plus one bonus. So for instance, this one right here, if you had that toolkit, you'd only need to roll a four or higher in order to do it. So those are the kind of cards you're going to get in the game. Also, sometimes when you get attacked or deal with a trap, you might get dazed. And this is dazed right here. And it's going to, uh, you're going to make it so that you suffer a minus one penalty when you, you can't dash, which is running fast, which kind of stinks. However, you can get rid of it by spending two action points on your turn, which is two-thirds of your turn. 
So let's go over the action points and the different things you can do on your turn. First one, an obvious one, is that you can move to a connected passage. Boom, I moved, and then I would flip over a new tile and deal with uh, the cards on there. Uh, next, you can dash. So if there are already a couple tiles that are connected, like say this, and there's nothing in them, there's no uh, traps or monsters, you can just boom, boom, you can go up to two spaces and run, which means you can go a little bit faster. Next, you can pick up, because as I mentioned, uh, there will be blue cards that spawn on there, and you can pick them up by spending one action point. Uh, you can also drop things. You can drop things in your line of sight. That is absolutely free, and you will need to do that uh, quite frequently, actually, most of the time, because you have a hand limit, so you can't just have all these awesome cards stacked in front of you. You have to decide which ones are going to be the most useful, and then when you start picking up treasure, you're really going to have to decide which ones are going to help you get out of the cave alive. Next, you have the shove action, and you can only do this once because uh, you are not only going to be trying to kill monsters, you're also going to be trying to kill your opponents. So let's say these two guys are right there, then as part of their turn, one of them could shove the other person into the next tile. So let's just see what happens. Uh, we'll go with that one. Boom, he'd shove him right there. Now this player would have to immediately deal with the one monster that would spawn right there, which uh, you know could potentially kill him. It could turn out good, though. Who knows? It really is a little bit of a gamble. In addition to hurting them like that, you can also throw an item at them. Yes, you heard me right. You can throw things at people, uh, which is quite humorous, and uh, essentially you're just going to be throwing it in their line of sight, your roll of dice, and you might have a chance to hit them and do one point of damage. Damage you're going to be keeping track of by these little gems right there. Uh, next you have destroy, which is, means you're going to be able to destroy a passage around you. So let's just say, you know, you don't like the monsters that are right next to you. Uh, let's just say there's uh, a monster right here and you don't want to deal with it. Boom, you can destroy it. Now it's gone. So perfectly valuable option, destroy it. And no, you can never destroy this tile, you sadomasochist. Last but not least, you can focus, and that is just to get red. Uh, oh, never mind, excuse me. Uh, the focus is if you are about to roll the dice and you really want to succeed, you can spend one action point or two action points or three action points to add it to your dice roll to potentially, hopefully, keep you alive a little bit longer. So those are the actions you're going to take. You're going to go around the cave, you're going to continue to explore it, you're looking for the purple cards, and the cave is going to get big. And also along the way, uh, before we bow out, I want to tell you about some of the cool, unique kind of tiles that are in here, because I will give them a big shout out on that. There's some really cool tiles. So this one, Tangling Vines, you cannot dash or flee out of this passage. Moving out of the passage costs an extra one action point. Rejuvenating Spring, if you start your turn in this passage, gain two health. Secret Tunnel, place your explorer into any discovered secret tunnel. And there's quite a few of these, so these can jump you around the cave in different areas. We have, oh, this is for the solo mode, probably not going to show you that one. Uh, so let's see, uh, there's another one that I want to show you, I can't find it. There's another Secret Tunnel, another Secret Tunnel. Uh, rejuvenating. There's a there's a bottomless pit. Yeah, the colossal pit, which kind of amps up the theme a little bit. Where you immediately entering this, if you don't roll higher than a four, uh, excuse me, if you roll less than a four, you're going to fall into it and do two health, uh, which is a big amount of damage. However, you have the whip, you kind of swing over it. So a nice little thematicism there in this game. Uh, so anywho, you're going to continue to do that until someone is able to successfully escape from the cave with three of the treasures. Now, there also is a solo variant of the game, which I'm going to talk about just a wee bit, where you're going to be using the extra meeples, and they are going to be ghosts, and they're going to be chasing you around. But in addition, they don't want you to take their valuable treasure, so they are going to be picking up items. So you're going to have to deal with monsters, you're going to have to deal with traps, you're going to have to deal with the ghost, and then you're still going to have to escape. And in that version of the game, if you bump up the difficulty, which I think you will, because the easy is very easy, uh, the cave health. So not only is there ghosts and monsters and traps, but the, the cave is slowly but surely about to crumble. If you ever run out of cave health, it will just go down on top of you and you will die. But that, in a nutshell, is how Skullbug is played. Alright then, Skullbug from Ready Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. First, big, 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 big con. Five and six players, I just don't recommend it. It is as simple as that. I didn't have fun with this five and six players, and no one that I played it with really enjoyed it five and six players. And there's one giant reason for that, and that is because the time between your turns takes forever. Not Twilight Imperium forever, but still forever. 
Uh, which is unfortunate, considering this is a very simple, straightforward game that you would not expect it to take that long between your turns, because on your turn you only have three actions. You do your three actions, and it's somebody else's turn, right? Wrong, because somebody might get shoved, and then they're going to be taking their own, you know, they're going to have to deal with traps and monsters based on that shove, or someone might throw something at someone, there's going to be dice rolling, and this and that might happen, someone might blow something up, and it takes way too long in between turns and five and six players, which is unfortunate. Also, the team version of the game is really kind of ho-hum. I was expecting a little bit more teamwork, and for the most part, it's not really there. Yeah, maybe you lay a trap somewhere behind one of your teammates as they're trying to escape or something like that. Maybe you talk about which way you're going to go, but for the most part, it's pretty much still the exact same game. I just wanted more out of the team variant of the the game. Another huge con I have with this, and this is something that hopefully will not be a con for you if you watch this video and you still choose to get this game, and that is the fact that some of the rules are in fact not in the area where you think they would be. They're in these stupid little bubbles on the side of the page that look like helpful hints, like these things right here. When I see those, I generally think, all right, you know, maybe I need to read those. Probably not, though. And the first couple. What is a discard pile? Can I shuffle the fortunes normally? How much space do we need to play the game? Very minute, minor things, right? Wrong! Because once you get deeper into the game, there are huge, not just helpful hints, but rules in those little bubbles. And if you do not look at them, you're going to be like, what do we do here? I can't find it anywhere. Oh, it's on the side. Who the hell puts it on the side? Frustrating. That being said, the rule booklet is uh, pretty well done, especially for all the stuff going on, because you can play this solo, you can play a team, you can play it uh, regular version, free-for-all. Um, any other cons that I have with the game? Not really. I think I think I've hammered on the things that I want to hammer on to. Skullbug is a good game. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it at two, three, four players, and at one. And I, and I know a lot of you guys are solo gamers who might be watching this. Is this a fun solo game? Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's enjoyable. It's challenging when you up the difficulty, and I hope they come out with a version 2, because that would uh, kind of up the ante. You know, I really think a lot of people are going to like this game. It's a very interesting tile-based game. Well, there's one more con I forgot on the, uh, that I forgot to mention, and that is it's very random. You know, do you get a tile that has two treasures, or do you get a tile that has three monsters? Uh, you know, two of them are a trap, and one of them is a monster, you know? It really is random, but I feel like that fits the theme of the game, and that's another thing I like about this game. The theme comes across decent enough. They really tried to cram the theme into this game, and they could have it could have failed pretty easily, and it doesn't. That's one thing I like about the solo game, because it does have this fun sense of tension, especially as you bump up the difficulty. Because in the solo game, you're trying to get the three treasures and then get out, and then there's ghosts chasing you, and these ghosts have some of the treasures, so sometimes you have to deal with the ghosts, and the ghost. You know, they don't do, you know, they're not a huge deal, but they just, they just up the ante. They bump up the pressure a little bit, and I like that quite a bit. I liked it two players, I liked it three players. I think three players was probably my favorite player count. Things were quick, things were fluid, you know. When someone finally gets the treasure, they have to run back and they get sacked. Oh, that's another thing that I forgot to mention on the cons. Especially at the higher player count, some people are going to hate the fact that, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this, that once you get the three treasures, everyone just tries to kill you. And then uh, somebody picks it up, and then they try and kill them. And then somebody picks it up, and somebody tries to kill them. And a lot of the time, uh, it's very hard and difficult, uh, I think those are the same word, pretty much, uh, synonyms, to plan for that. You know, I personally didn't mind, but still it is something that I wanted to mention. Uh, Component-wise, very nice components, great box insert, micro cards, you know, they're fine with this. I, honestly, I just left them face up on the table. They're not the kind of thing that are going to be in your hands too much. And, uh, you know, I liked the different tiles. They had a lot of cool, unique tiles, theme of the game. Overall, it's a good game that could have been great. And I think, you know, maybe with some sp expansions and if you're playing it two to four players or solo, it can be a great game for some people. So this is definitely one I would label under the try before you buy category, but not a bad game, unless you're playing five or six players. And that is Skullbug from Ruddy Games. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what is your favorite flavor of ice cream. For me personally, I like uh, chocolate chip cookie dough, but I also like chocolate chip peanut butter cookie dough. That's where you just melt peanut butter and then you put it in there and just mix it up. It's my own kind of concoction, but still, it's fantastic. It's delicious. And yes, I love, oh man, I love ice cream. Oh, I love ice cream. But let me know in the comments below what is your favorite kind of ice cream. As always, thanks for your time, YouTube.